Hi, and welcome to this Latino Ministry for Christ channel. Before we proceed to the reflection you have come to see, I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel, to activate the bell, to give us a like, to share this video, and to leave your comments. This will allow the algorithms to promote the reflections so that more people may be reached with the gospel. God bless you. In the reflection for today, His mercies are new every morning. They say that one night in 1935, Fiorello Henry LaGuardia, mayor of New York, showed up at a night court in the poorest ward of the city. He dismissed the judge for the evening and took over the bench. One case involved an elderly woman who was caught stealing bread to feed her grandchildren. La Guardia told the old woman, I have to punish you, $10 fine or 10 days in jail. As Fiorello spoke, he put $10 in his hat. He then fined everyone in the courtroom 50 cents for living in a town where a person had to steal bread so his grandchildren can eat. The hat was passed among the attendees and the woman at the end of the trial left that courtroom with the fine paid and with an additional $47.50. I don't know if this story is true, but if it is, praise the Lord for that mayor who had the good-hearted sense to demonstrate mercy to that poor lady. And the truth is that he did even more than show mercy. He acted in favor of the lady and her need. This day, we will be immersing into the enigmatic mercies of God for us human beings. For the reflection of this day, we read in the book of Lamentations, Yet I still dare to hope when I remember this, the beautiful love of the Lord never ends, His mercies never cease, Great is His faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 21 to 23. Jeremiah, also called the weeping prophet, was one of the main prophets of the Old Testament. According to Jewish tradition, Jeremiah wrote the book of Jeremiah, the book of Kings, and the book of Lamentations. Born around 650 BC and died in the year 570 BC in Egypt. The Book of Lamentations is believed to have been written around 580 BC. The book is made up of a collection of poetic laments for the destruction of Jerusalem. The Tanakh is to say the Hebrew Bible contains the Torah which are the first five books of the Old Testament. It also contains the Nevi'im, which are the books of the prophets, and the Ketubim, which are the writings. The five scrolls, or the five Megillot, are parts of the Ketubim, or the writings. The five scrolls that are made up are the Songs of Solomon, the Book of Ruth, the Book of Lamentations, the Book of Ecclesiastes, and the Book of Esther. These five relatively short biblical books are grouped together in the Jewish tradition and are called Ketuvim. Going back to the biblical verse for this reflection, the different versions of the scripture use the word mercy instead of compassion. God's mercy and compassion are new every morning, yet another reason for you and I to praise Him. Although the words compassionate 
and merciful have very similar meanings, there is a difference between these two words. Let's pay attention to the definitions of these two words. Compassion can be defined as pity or concern. Therefore, being compassionate is when an individual shows concern or pity toward another person's condition. Mercy, on the other hand, can be defined as forgiveness shown toward someone. Being merciful is when an individual shows mercy and forgiveness or gives relief to another so that he does not suffer. The prophet Jeremiah wrote lamentations at a time of national grief and mourning after the great city of Jerusalem had fallen to the Babylonian Empire around 580 CBC. The book describes the great anguish and great hope in a poetic way. The main theme of the Book of Lamentations is the judgment of God on the sin of the Kingdom of Judah, as well as His matchless compassion for His people. Lamentations contains laments or loud cries for Jerusalem and many expressions of anguish and pain. But in chapter 3, right in the middle of the book, there is a beautiful passage of confidence and hope. The prophet Jeremiah's tone changes from despair to hope in Lamentations 3.21 when he says, Yet I still dare to hope. From this and ensuing verses, we know that even in the darkest times, God is faithful and will not cast off His people forever. Every day, every morning, God shows His mercy and compassions towards the human being in general. And although our rebellions deserve punishment, after the correction also comes the compassion and mercy of the Almighty, if we repent. One thing we can be sure of is that God's love and justice are faithful and unwavering. His plans do not change. His mercy is unmatched. The scripture declares to us these qualities of God's divine sovereignty. An example of this is found in the book of Psalms. David wrote, O Lord God of heaven's armies, where is there anyone as mighty as you, O Lord? You are entirely faithful. Book of Psalms, chapter 89, verse 8. Mercy represents the compassionate treatment that God grants to a person beyond their merits, expressed by the virtue of the atonement through the uniqueness of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, His Son. Our Heavenly Father knows each of our weaknesses, faults, and sins. He shows us mercy and benevolence by forgiving our multitude of sins and helping us return and dwell with Him. With great confidence we can exclaim from the rooftops, The great love of the Lord never ends, and His mercy never runs out. Every morning His mercies are renewed. Great is His faithfulness, so we could say, The Lord is all I have. I will hope in Him. We can see that His great love remains faithful even in times of divine anguish and judgment. God never stopped loving Israel, even though He disciplined them. The Hebrew word translated as great love is used some 250 times in the Old Testament. It refers to love, of course, but it also encompasses elements of grace, mercy, kindness, forgiveness, compassion, and faithfulness. It is God's great love for His people that saved them from being completely annihilated by Babylon. As we know from history itself, God later restored His people to their land and blessed them again. The unfailing compassion and mercy of God is latent. Mercy in the Bible is God's withholding of a just punishment. The particular Hebrew word used in Lamentations 3.22 has to do with His great and abundant tender love and His tender mercy, or pity. 
The Lord shows mercy to his suffering children. Indeed, his mercies are new every morning. God's mercy is ready to forgive our sins. We serve a great, powerful, loving, and merciful God, and it is because of his great love that we are not consumed. Our God is for us, not against us. No wonder the scripture tells us in the book of Jeremiah, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Just as people live in the certainty that the sun will rise in the morning, we believers can trust and know that God's great love and faithfulness will be received anew each day and His tender mercies will be renewed with each sunrise. Our hope for today, tomorrow, and for all eternity rest firmly on God's unchanging love and unfailing mercy. Tell me, are you going through suffering and in need of God's mercy? Have you tried everything the world has to offer and yet now you find yourself more miserable than ever? If you conscientiously answer yes to these questions, let me tell you that God's mercy is knocking at the door of your life. Today could be the day you receive God's mercy. What you need is to bend your knees and cry it out to Him in prayer. Unlike us, who often change our minds and moods, God's love does not waver, because it is faithful and is renewed with each awakening. This verse means that God's people then, and we now, can place our hope not in the changing circumstances of our lives and this world, but in God's rock-solid love that never changes. The hope that the writer expresses here is not created by denying or minimizing suffering and misery, but based on God's unchanging love. Sharon Betters, author of the book Aging Gracefully, Mother, Grandmother, great-grandmother, pastor's wife, and co-founder of Mark Inc. Ministries, wrote, Spec new mercies designed to remind you that He is the Lord your God and calls you by your name. When we develop the discipline of living Lamentations 3.22-23, in our lives we know that he is there for us, sometimes through others and sometimes for others through us. Glory be to God in the highest for that inexhaustible love. The maximum expression of the mercy and benevolence of God is manifested in the presence of Jesus Christ in this world of darkness. He is the maximum expression of the love of God for a world that is heading for the death and destruction of the soul. The scriptures confirm this for us in the Gospel of John, and it tells us, John testified about him when he shouted to the crowds, This is the one I was talking about when I said, Someone is coming after me who is far greater than I am. For he existed long before me. From his abundance we have all received one gracious blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses, but God's unfaithful love and faithfulness came through Jesus Christ. John chapter 1 verses 15 to 17. My dear friend and brother, there are crushing moments in life when we feel isolated and alone. Often, in these very moments, God is closest to us, speaking to us most clearly and giving our storm-battered hearts absolute peace. When we bow at His feet, He is faithful. After the storm He passes, He will give you the mercy necessary for you to feel His compassion. Our all-powerful God and Father, we thank you for sustaining us through the night and promising us an endless day at the end of our life's journey. 
Help us not to let ourselves be influenced by the adverse circumstances of our lives, but rather help us to keep the eyes of our hearts fixed on you, knowing that your plans and your purposes are perfect. We pray that you find love and praise on our lips and in our hearts in every moment of our lives. We implore you these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.